and visitors and friends. We want to thank you for joining us tonight for uh, Bible study with Faith Counseling on tonight. Uh, we pray right now that uh, you have had an awesome and uh, glorious day on today. Um, uh, we thank God for allowing you to uh, join us on tonight for Bible study. And uh, we're going to just get it kicked off. And uh, I'm going to kick us off with prayer. So I just ask you to um, just uh, to humble yourself, clear your mind, your thoughts for today. And uh, let's just come together as a um, uh, congregational group uh, to worship God tonight uh, in spirit and in truth and also through his word on tonight. So we just want to just uh, prepare our minds and our heart as we get ready to open in prayer on tonight. We just thank you for joining us again on tonight and uh, we pray that um, you've had a successful weekend getting ready to get started and uh, going to get a great night of Bible study again. And so I'm just going to start off in a word of prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come right now, Lord. just want to say thank you right now, Lord, that you are so awesome to us right now, Lord, that you continue to uh, to watch over us, to continue to keep us right now, Lord. We thank you for uh, today's uh, journey this day, Lord. We thank you for those that um, have completed a, a, another day of work, another day of school. And uh, Lord, you've allowed us to uh, protect us today as we traveled home, Lord, and we're um, united with our families once again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just grace, your mercy that you have shown us on today, Lord. And we just come praying right now, Lord, uh, for each and every one right now in the sound of my voice, Lord, that uh, whatever they stand in need of on tonight, this day, Lord, right now, Lord, that it be granted unto them right now, Lord. We just come just want to just say thank you for um, your your word that, Lord, that we stand upon, Lord, that we build our faith off of right now, Lord. We uh, just come praying for any sick, any um, one that is um, uh, 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 ill right now, Lord. We pray your mercy, your grace, your healing grace upon on their their bodies right now lord we pray for just safe travel grace for those that are still on their way from work or maybe on their way home right now lord we pray that your angels are keeping them safe and protected right now lord we pray for all our leaders we pray for our pastor of this church lady joy and all our leaders and our members and, and friends uh and our, 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 our online viewers on tonight right now right now lord we just thank you for our, our leadership of our government right now we pray for all our leaders right now lord we pray that they will just continue to uh be together on one accord lord to live by your word lord to be um to live by the duties and the office of which they hold on tonight right now, Lord. We just give you thanks. We give you glory right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have come together again on tonight, Lord, to read your word right now, Lord. We thank you for... Um, the book that we are reading, Lord, understanding uh, uh, about the biblical principle of, of, of our sowing of the seeds right now, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, that our mind has been renewed, transformed right now, as your word tells us to right now, Lord, and that we meditate on your word both day and night right now, Lord. We just give you glory right now. We thank you for all the um things that uh, accomplishment that we are able to achieve lord um through your word right now lord and that we are um uh, being called and and our gift within uh the purpose that you have given us uh, uh upon this earth right now lord we're just not merely walking around just breathing in air lord but we are here on this earth for a purpose right now lord we just thank you lord that we are operating in our gift in our purpose and that we are advancing the kingdom of god on this day lord impacting the world lord changing people live law uh bringing souls to you law those that are lost law those that are even um have backslidden right now law those that may have walking away law and, and we on tonight, Lord, just pray for those uh, souls that are lost right now, Lord, we're, that we are calling them in uh, one by one, um, Lord, to be um, to recommit their life to you, Lord, to give you their life and live and holy and be committed to your word, Lord, to live for you, Lord, not for man, Lord. And we just give you praise. We give you honor on tonight, Lord. We just give you uh, your praise that is due right now, Lord. Right, we just thank yeah. you for what you're doing in our life and what you're going to do, Lord. And we just give way right now for your Holy Spirit spirit to just uh, take control of us on this day, on this Bible study on tonight, Lord, that hearts and minds will be enlightened of the studying of your word through your scripture right now, Lord, that revelation will come like no other uh, uh, that it has before right now, Lord. We just give uh, honor to you on tonight, Lord, and we give you praise, we give you glory, Lord, and we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Again, I want to just welcome you to uh, Faith Constantly Bible Study on tonight, and I pray that um, that your hearts and minds are open to receive the Word of God on tonight, and uh, we get ready to uh, study His Word again on tonight, as we know that we have been uh, studying uh, Dr. Leroy Thompson's book, uh, Money Comes, and so again, as Pastor always starts off the uh, Bible study, is, um, is that uh, we want to apologize again for those that may have been uh, hurt or harmed by any teachings that have uh, maybe uh, caused you to stray away from church or maybe not be in, in a good standings or even have heart feelings about uh, uh, sowing of the seeds, the, the tithes, the offering. And so what we um, hope to accomplish here is the teaching the biblical principle of the sowing of the seed, the tithes, the offering. Um, as we know that, you know, there's a lot that has been taught on it, but not maybe the right proper way of teaching. It. And hope we hope that each and every one is getting a good revelation of understanding uh, the position of the tithes, the offering, the sowing of the seeds. And so we uh, hopefully that, you know, in the uh, weeks that we've been covering this book, and I, and I know right now we're in um, chapter seven and we um uh, have been covering this book pretty good and a great uh, dialogue and discussion that's been going on. So I hope that each and every one is definitely have a good news story from this and being enlightened from uh, Dr. Uh, Thompson's book, uh, Money Comes. And I hope that uh, biblical principles have been put in place or are now starting to be exercised and, and applied in your life and that it become a part of your daily living and a part of the ministry as far as you um, uh, sowing and, and, and uh, into the the kingdom of God so that your uh, uh, blessings come and be multiplied. And so we know um, that there's been a lot of discussion. And so we hope that that we're definitely um, clearing the way and, and, and teaching uh, you as what the word of God and what the Bible says about our sowing of the seeds and our tithes and our offerings on tonight. And so we just want to thank you for joining us on tonight as we uh, get ready to dive into another awesome night of Bible study. And um, we're going to um, just ask that you continue with your, your uh, comments, uh, questions that you might have. And uh, we're going to move forward in our book on tonight. And we're going to get it kicked off here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All right. Well, let me back up and welcome our panelists. You don't want to get get over that and everything, though, so tonight. So, hey, so we are welcome. And I give them a minute as I get ready to uh, we get ready to kick it off. So uh, welcome all the panelists on tonight. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. Good Amen. evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good to see you, Kayla. Mm. Nice to see you, too, my own. <laughs> all right. All right. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I don't want to uh, avoid. Uh, I know we usually kind of do some opening comments. And so I'm going to make sure if anybody got any opening ones and uh, we get it started and kicked off here tonight and everything. Oh, Sister Jelana or um, Sister Kayla. Brother yeah. Vincent. So last week we did, man, we went actually we kind of went through. A, we was almost finished with Chapter seven. Um, mm -hmm. I think we went all the way up to seven principles. Um, in uh, from last week. And I think the biggest thing for me from last week was really, um, um, I think I'm trying to figure out, oh, making sure that you have a plan because your plan, you know, um, your money has an assignment. I think that was the biggest thing that I, um, you know, brought up last week is that when your money has an assignment, you don't, you know, it's, it's kind of harder to mismanage um, your money when it is already assigned before you get into your hands. So that's the main comment I had from last week. All right. So. So for those that are joining us, um, what Sister Jelani is talking about, you know, and what past, uh, Dr. Thompson has been telling us in Money Cometh, you know, there's this period between the time that, you know, our, our request is there and then when money is coming to us. But there's that period of lapse there. And what he's doing in Chapter 7 is he's showing us how to survive until prosperity arrives. And there's these principles that he uh, he's talking about with um things that we can do to posture ourselves until God brings the prosperity or, or until the prosperity arrives. You know, it's one of them things where, you know, we're not only supposed to be hearers of the word, but we're supposed to be doers of the word as well. 
and there's steps and measures and things that we can do until God um, responds and brings prosperity to us. And some of those things, you know, uh, are some of the basic, simple life steps in what he's talking about, that things that we should be doing as Christians uh, without even, uh, I guess, unconsciously doing, you know, when you're grounded with Christ, you know. So uh, and in that, he he has about eight or nine of these. And Jelana made a good point, you know, and we've been kind of talking about these and we up to the point where uh, the last time we talked, we kind of got into purpose, you know part of that dealt with purpose. And that's what Jelana is talking about. You know, we've been talking about being content and refusing to uh, allow things to come in that would cause the prosperity to be delayed even more as you're waiting, you know, obeying your master and look to God, not man for prosperity, you know, for those things. Heaven has come to your rescue. Uh, all these different principles, your prosperity comes by faith. And we know that faith is the foundation of everything that we do as uh, believers in Christ, understanding what money is for. And that's the purpose that Jelana is talking about. When you understand what your purpose is, then you give an assignment to your money rather than waiting for your money to come. And then you don't know what to do with it. Understanding what that money is for. Why did God give it to you? What did he plan for you to do with that? Uh, going back to that and then having that balance and refusing all temptation to complain. I think that was probably one of the better ones for me last week, Jelana, uh, is not complaining, you know, about, you know, things when, when you're waiting for prosperity to arrive. It's the way that we posture ourselves and our mindsets that we take in our hearts, what we position it at and understanding its purpose, why the money is here and, and refusing to complain or make complaints uh, when things are not going right, the situations are not looking uh, the way that you want them to look and things looking kind of dire and grim, uh, but just being content and still remaining in that joy until that period or lapse of the situation or the event or the circumstance passes. So that was one of the big things I got from last week is refusing to complain as you're waiting for prosperity to arrive yeah, and not taking things true. into your own hands. Yeah, I think that was hers too. Um, I think hers was um, do not. Oh, hers was do not um, do not panic when the circumstances don't look good. That was hers. Kayla, did you have one? Did you have a um, opening comment for this week? We would love to hear your voice. This is such an honor. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Uh, um, I would have to agree with Brother Vincent. One of the things that stuck out to me. Oh, wait, what happened? I think my service is messing up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're oh, just. No. Can you yeah, hear we us? can hear you. Am I glitching? Just a little bit, yes. Oh, no. <sighs> Well, she's Hello? working that over there. Can Hello? you hear us? You're back with us. And you're muted, just so you know. Okay, you know this barracks Wi-Fi is real ghetto, y'all. Please. <laughs> Please with me. Please. Refuse to complain. <laughs> you're right. Look, I check myself. Check myself. Um, but I would I would say that I would have to agree with Brother Vincent. When I read, um, I think it's in the last paragraph on page 152, when it said, remain content and refuse to complain. Well, refuse to compare yourself with others. We haven't even got there yet, Kayla, but yes, I'm with oh, you. That's, yeah, I'm that's, ahead of the game. You ahead of the game, girl. <laughs> okay, you go ahead and lead us off. <laughs> I know. We ended with, um, we, we skipped point six, though, but we ended with point five. Okay. So I made a, I'm sorry okay. about that. So we... We stopped at don't be moved by adverse circumstances. That was the last one. And so, okay. um, and then the next one after that is pay no attention to critics. Wow. Um, that's and what he yeah. talked about. Yeah. Ignore others who are he hecklers. And um, he said, as you begin to prosper, some people will speak against you and prosecute you because you're prospering and they're not. Don't pay mm -hmm. them any mind. Amen. I want to make a comment Amen. here. 
So I remember when I first started out, this is the funny part. You know, normally people who know me know, like, I'm, I'm not really bothered with people comments, but this really bothered me. I remember when I first started out in luxury travel, right? And I posted this, I think I mentioned this on here. I posted this um, Facebook post um, about, you know, luxury travel. I was at the Ritz Carlton. I just had this picture or whatever. And one of my old high school classmates said, Jelana, you're le Oh, it's just, I mean, you know, I don't, I'm good now. Okay, I'm good, y'all. I'm good. <laughs> but he said that I was leading people, leading people the wrong way. And he said mm -hmm. that it sounds like you're always talking about prosperity. And I'm sitting here like, what? And that was so hot. And then Lady Joy said, he's right. Not right about I'm leading people the wrong way, but right. I talk about prosperity. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. <laughs> and so I had to realize even our own, like when, you, when I say our own, like people who are supposed to be of the same faith don't understand all of God, don't understand the kingdom principles, don't understand that we're supposed to be financially blessed so we could be a blessing to others. And that's a, that's a big deal. Like I had to get over that part because I was just like, what? I'm not trying to lead nobody the wrong way. And then, but that's to me, that's a sign when you're starting to step out and start talking about the, the kingdom, you know? So I just want to bring that up. Man. <laughs> and that is, um, you know, like I said, in that paragraph, it's talked about, you know, pay no attention to criticism. And that's, you know, you have to be in a right frame of mind in order to because, you know, we can sit here, you know, the scriptures, you know, um, you know, talks about the fury, uh, fury darts. And so you have to be in a mindset to really to pay no attention because you know you live you know somebody hey you know you ain't supposed to have that in you know and so and just you know the heckling and the you know that sometimes you know if we're in the natural in that flesh realm you know you're going to be susceptible to the heckle the juggles and all that other stuff but like i said this is how we know we have to stay you know meditated in the word prayed up so that you know that's as they said the fiery you know so that when you know the scripture talks about us putting on the helmet you know the the breastplate you know and all those different um protection that we supposed to have daily so if we're dressed with that on you know when that heckle that chuckles and all that stuff comes you know it just flies over us and say okay well carry on i know what god has you know for my life and what me and him has been in prayer and conversation about to where that they can heckle and chuckle and say whatever and you just keep you know right on because like i said this is where you know we have to be as a body of believers to in that state of mind because like i said we're acceptable to that flesh that you know that's the first thing well what you know we worry about what he says she say instead of worrying about you know you know, the author and the finisher of our faith, what God can do because, you know, yeah, they can say some things that will, you know, as they said, ruffle our feathers only if we let that be ruffled. So, but like I said, I was just, you know, that, and when he was talking about paying no attention to criticism, that's a, you know, that's a mindset where we really got to be in that position to, um, and he'll talk about, you know, that a little later on in the chapter about the position, but I think that is a critical point that he brought out because, um, as we talked about the uh, lady a couple of weeks ago that, you know, they had to go out and borrow the vessels and just if she would, if, if every house she went and knocked on had somebody help her and check her and, you know, maybe they still gave her the, the, the vessel, but yet they said something to her that gets in her spirit to where, you know, there's could have been. 10 more vessels that she could have went and borrowed, but because somebody, you know, she let get into her spirit to where they heckle and chuckle at her. Oh, well, I'm, I'm finna stop right here. And that wasn't what the prophet had told her to do. He told her to borrow some vessels, not not a few. So, you know, that meant many. So, yeah, yeah. So I think that, was, you know, it's so important. I was say, get it, but them feelings. Right, right, right. <laughs> Check. That's what it is. <laughs> So, you know, a lot of times, you know, um, I, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but some of the things that I've experienced with these hecklers uh, and it's sad to sad to believe it. But most of the time is within the church itself, within the body of Christ. Nice. Um, others outside be like, OK, well, yeah, whatever is happening to them is happening to them. But it's sometimes even challenging for even our own uh, believers to be happy or glad for you, be joyous for you. But yet there's that portion where they were like, ah, you know, that ain't gonna work, you know, but I'm like, like Jelana said, you want to, you want to, you want to be around people that have an equal, equal or greater faith, you know, mm -hmm. someone that's going to encourage you as you're prospering 
and not those that are looking at you like, well, girl, that ain't going to work too long. That's going to end. That's just a one night thing. It's going to be over next week and you'll be back to where we are, you know, and then you have family that kind of do those type things to you, you know, close friends, John are making faces, but, and close friends, you know, those type things, you know, and it's typically people that help with you are the people that's close to you, you know, and, 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 and that's the thing, like, it's almost like you have to armor yourself for the proximity of who you're around, you know, and, and again, finding those, those faith people, those people that are great in faith and, and less in soul, you know, you don't want those soulish people around you. Cause as we were talking Sunday, you know, these type things get in your character, which will cause you to move from where God is trying to put you to posture you for prosperity. So again, this is, you know, surviving until prosperity arrives. So this is taking into the account that prosperity hasn't come. And even if it is on its way and it's starting to show, being mindful of those hecklers and those critics out there who are trying to throw you off course. But the thing is, it's not ne it, it may not necessarily be them it's the enemy using the people that are close to us to bring you out of a place of prosperity because he doesn't want to see you prosper. So we have to be mindful of that. Even as the body of believers, we ourselves have to be mindful not to criticize others as they're prospering and being joyous for the, for the prosperity that in the beginning of the prosperity for that person and be more of encouragement, not discouragement and discontentment bring it on them. Amen. So, Kayla, are you going to introduce the principle number seven? <laughs> I yes, I'm going to be right this time, y'all. You, you're okay, right. So, oh, so principle number seven says, remain content and refuse to compare yourself with others. So when I read this, what came into my mind, because I'm reading in the New Testament right now, and I just got out of, I want to say Mark. And when I read this, it reminded me of Mark 9 and 1. I don't know if y'all can recall it off the top of y'all head, but I do have it here. And it says that he said unto them, verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So it made me think about myself because um, I'd be like, Lord, I'm over here doing my best, pushing to become a better person. And it seems like individuals who are not trying to be their best selves have a lot of prosperity going on. And I'm like, hold on. Girl. Wait a minute. I don't understand what's going on. I was so serious. But when I read that scripture and I got revelation, it's. To me, what, what I get from it is basically saying that there may be those right now that will continue to prosper and look like everything's good and and fantastic for them and may not see any, um, may not reap any of, the, any of the negativity that they put out into the world until Christ comes back. So it, it like, it, it made me feel better, you know, it, that understanding <laughs> made me yeah. relax. It's like, okay, God, I understand. I was tripping, but you got look, me. You look, know, I'm the, I understand what's going on. Look, I'm the opposite. I feel like when I when I saw that principle, because I have been guilty of it, and it's for actually believe I know that there are believers, and I see that what God has told me to do, and then like it, it appears it looked like they're doing the same thing and like really being mm -hmm. successful at it. And you be like, so then now you're like comparing yourself, like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be a whole lot further. Oh, wow. I'm not, you know, it's like now condemnation yeah. comes in versus conviction. And I, mm -hmm. I noticed that that was one of my patterns that would cause me to stop and not move forward in certain things because I see certain, especially social media, I would see certain things and then I get sad or whatever. And then it just, next thing you know, I noticed that I'm not moving forward in what I'm supposed to be doing. But um, thank God that he revealed those trees that he did not plant in my heart. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. we're working on that. Now I'm moving forward. I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I got blinders on. I'm laser focused, you know? So, yeah. And I agree. And the struggle was real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that remained content and refused to compare yourself with others. 
I wrote this in my book, but I believe that someone else may have said this, um, maybe Lady Joy, but she said comparing your, I think it was Lady Joy, comparing yourself to others can lead to destruction, mm-hmm. you know? So as you're looking at yourself and trying to compare yourself to others, I thought that was so important. I don't know who said it, but I believe it was Lady Joy. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to take credit for that because I know that I didn't write this, write to say this. Uh, but leading to destruction, you know, when you're constantly trying to compare yourself with others and trying to stay up with others as they're prospering, you're trying to do what they're doing, but yours is not real prosperity, um, which, you know, can lead you to a place of destruction. And that destruction is being in debt because you can't you can't sustain what that person's prosperity is sustaining in their life. You know, as God is prospering them, he's sustaining them as well. But yet, if God is not doing that for you at the moment of where you are versus where they are, then you're trying to live outside of God's means and kind of doing it on your own. And when you inject yourself, you know, and and again, this is the thing of removing that soul and allowing the spirit to come in, removing that flesh and allowing the flesh and the mind and the will and the intellect not to come in and try to override what God is trying to do. We talked about this purpose, knowing what money is for, you know, and you doing all of these things that this person is doing, but you don't really know what God has planned for them and what they have in their purpose. And you're trying to stay up with somebody else's purpose, which is Mm -hmm. not your purpose. Okay. God is financing their purpose, you know, and not yours. So, and I I think that is so critical comparing yourself to others can lead to destruction because even Dr. Thompson said over here on page 153, he said, wherever you are now financially, have contentment along with your commitment to trust God. So when we start doing things that lead us to our destruction, that's because we don't trust God. We're not waiting on him. We're not, we're not sitting patiently and in contentment and commitment to trust him and allowing him to do these things uh, in our life. And he said, don't envy someone else because he has more than you. You know, there's a reason, as we've been saying, there's an assigned, that person has an assignment for their money, as Jelana was saying last week. They have an assignment for the money in their purpose of what they're doing. So if you start comparing that, and that's not your purpose, that's not the assignment for your money that you're doing right now. You're assigning money to places that's going to lead you to destruction. So don't compare yourself to others to avoid destruction. Look, let me just say this. Comparison is from the devil. I'm just going to say it. Like, and I ain't trying to be religious or anything because I just think about, I just know for myself and even from others that I have coached as well, when you go into that place of comparison, it, it does, you know, what does fear do? Fear stops the plans of God, right? It, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't allow you to move forward. And so when you start going into that comparison mode, it stops you, you know what I mean? It stops you from moving forward in the things that God has called you to do. And it could be many reasons, which it boils down to what you said, Brother Vincent, the trust factor. But, you know, so, you know, along with that trust factor is the disobedience. Because some things, you, you, if you were obedient on certain things, then you would have been a, a whole lot further. But then the other part of it is that's the reason why I says from the devil is because it's deception. Because what it appears to look like, a lot of times it might not be the case. You don't know the details of what's behind the scenes. When we are on social media, everybody, a lot of us put up face. A lot of us put on our best self. You know, um, we, a lot of us try to be authentic as our best self. But then, but sometimes it's, you see where we're not sharing all the bad stuff because then who's going to watch Facebook if you always hear the gloom, right? So you see more of the positive and you don't see the struggle, you know, or you don't see what the person had to go through the obstacles. And so when you start comparing yourself, I just feel like that's a bad role. Like you're going on the, the train of the devil or something. I start to sound like I'm Apostle um, um, Tom, um, Thompson, the way I sound real country right there. You're going on the devil's train right there because, you know, you're going, it's, it's allowing you not to move forward in your purpose. I feel like that is so, ugh. I'm sorry. I get just want to go back to the top of that 152. I know um, Sister Kayla read the uh, that, that seven principle, but but just it, it talks about the um, just that title, learn the secret of contentment. And then just understanding the definition of that word is a state of happiness and satisfaction. And so, you know, and not to point this at uh, Sister Kayla or anything, but yet 
And I know, like I said, because I've seen myself in the past, you know, looking like, you know, this person got a better car than I do. And, you know, I'm like, nah, I'm out here working hard and everything or they look like they prospering more or like I know I'm trying to live, you know, the uh, the, the biblical principles and everything. It's like but um, but when you understand, you know, when they talked about the principle of being, uh, you know, to um refuse to uh compare yourself and like brother vincent was talking about when you start comparing and it's like i said and and we're talking about in this sense here you know about you know sowing of the seed and money and like i said you'll try to go out and be in competition with them and and, and, that, and you put yourself in as he stated uh um you know about leading to destruction and everything because you know we you know i know the praise and worship team they sang this song god's got a blessing with your name on it so when you really think about that uh yet you know, you're being blessed every day to have the breath of life. But yet, you know, when we look at that, you know, when he even at the top of that page, he said, you know, you, you may not be where you want to be financially right now. But he also says that other piece, you know, um, our commitment should be to, to trust God. So in all things, whether it's money, life, health, you know, strength, you know, marriage, um, you know, parenting and all that good stuff, you know, we still got to trust God with that. And so. Um, yeah, it may be the person, your coworker, or your soldier to the left or the right, like they might be prospering. But if you know you're living out the principle and wholeheartedly doing, you know what the word of God is saying, you're 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 being blessed, and your blessing is on the way, even in the areas of where you may not even see it with your physical eyes and everything right now. But you know, like I said, you you still got to know and be committed to trust God that yeah, He hears your prayers. He knows the desires of your heart and he's going to honor that and he's going to grant it with it. But yet, if it if to me, it's the it's the building of the trust and relationship that you have with him. And it also is the building of the faith, because if you just get everything right then and there, there's no place for your faith to get built that. So, you know, so some things, you know, it, it tells it's working by the patient. And I don't want to jump ahead because I you know he's going to do us a comparison about patience and a 747 here on the runway in a little bit in the next uh, couple of pages and everything. So I don't want to jump ahead on that there, but just wanted to share about that contentment meaning is a state of happiness and being satisfied. Now, I mean, we always, you know, like I said, if we're making 50,000 a year. That don't mean just we, you know, the rest of our life, we just sell it for that. Or, you know, yeah, we got a one bedroom house. Then that just means we just sell it for that. You know, we, we each year or every five years or 10 years, you look to expand on what you have and, and being, uh, as he said, a good stewards of the, um, of what we do have our time and our gift and everything though. So, yeah. So one of the things that, you know, and we'll move on, but I just wanted to bring this up in, in verse 12 of that, of that um, Philippians 4, 10 through 19, where he says in there, he said, I know both how to be abased mm. and how to abound. And, and I know how to abound. So when you look at that, he's saying, I know both how to be abased to keep rejoicing when there is no money and how to abound to keep rejoicing when there is money. Mm -hmm. So the line there is keep rejoicing, mm -hmm. whether you have money or you don't have money, find your place. And I, I believe, you know, to me, that would be one of the, the, the secret of contentment, whether I have it or I don't have it. Right. I still need to keep rejoicing, you know, and, and thanking the Lord, because this whole chapter uh, of 10 through 19 is basically about Thanksgiving, you know, giving thanks, you know, and, and being joyous when you have it and when you don't have it, you know, not changing or being wavering in anything. I think that's the secret of money. If, you know, a lot of times you say, well, I don't have it, but I'm still going to be joyful. And, and, and Dr. Thompson talks about this later where he didn't have money. He was broke, but he was still joyful, you know? And then when he had, when he, when he's got a lot of money, he's still joyful. So at either way, it doesn't move you whichever way it is. But when you don't have it, you have to be joyful knowing that at some point, like Mark said, you have to be joyful continuously knowing that the prosperity is coming. I don't have it right now, but it's on its way. Money cometh is what this book is about. It's coming or money is coming. So that's the way you have to look at that to stay in that, in that, in that, that keep, keep, keep joyful. Amen. Amen. Man. All right. So we're moving on to principle eight. It says the eighth thing you need to do to survive until prosperity arrives is to practice patience. Woo! Mm. 
<laughs> and perseverance in your faith. And he's like, I'm talking about how to survive until prosperity arrives. When you're on the runway from pro poverty to prosperity, your situation doesn't change overnight. Amen. And um, the scripture that comes to mind, which I have learned, oh my gosh, I feel like I've learned so many lessons regarding patience, is um, do not grow weary. Amen. And well doing. <laughs> Boy, I, I probably can say that scripture in my sleep. I mean, <laughs> And then when you really think about that, do not grow weary in well doing. So that to me, when I hear that, it's like stay the course, just stay the Amen. course, Amen. stay the course. And so when you stay the course, you will see the fruit. So. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing like, um, you know, like I said, that scripture, when you think about that scripture and um, and then I kind of also think about, you know, when Jesus was on his way to the cross, you know, and like I said, carrying the sickness, the illness and all that, but yet still being whipped with all that. And I'm like, you know, we can sometimes say, well, man, wow, I'm having a rough day. I'm having a rough, you know, you, you, there's nothing that compared to what Jesus went through for what he did for us. So, <laughs> you know, so like I say, you know, when that scripture, it really resonates when you kind of compare those two is that the things that he went through, uh, you know, what we're experiencing and here on earth is you know it's like i said there's no comparison with that so um but like i said that practice of the uh patient peace and everything and so because even his illustration of this 747 and, and if you know a seven you know that plane that's a big plane and it takes a lot of runway to get that that plane off the ground and everything and so um and um you know but like i said definitely by the time it gets to the end of the runway it's it's airborne and it's it's up there and everything though so um and but you know like jets you know they don't take that much runway for that but yet you know packing that patience and everything and stuff and so i thought that was a good illustration that he did and so and we just got to have that patient and persistence and everything that we do because you know even for healing or uh, you know like i said and i know how you know jelana have shared a story about you know being married and all that, you know, the right one and everything. And so we, and that's in all areas of our life, you know, building that yeah. patience for that, you know, whether it's the job or the degree, because sometimes just going to school and if you did school online or if you went in the classroom, sometimes your patient wouldn't, especially if you was working and going to school. So that definitely, you know, showed your perseverance. That is that, hey, I, I'm getting a degree at the end of this, whether it's a bachelor, associate, master's, or a doctorate. You know, that's some per perseverance that you got to go through to get it because there's nights of studying that you don't feel like studying. <laughs> there's just nights you're in class or in the daytime you're in class that you just don't really want to be there. So, but, you know, you know, there's an end goal when that's all over with, though. Amen. And I, I do like that illustration he used, Mark, you know, and I was sitting up there reading that over and over again. Of course, you know, the whole thing of 747 is taking off being there, boy, you know, that kind of, you know, kind of sat with me a little bit uh, with my military profession. But, you know, and one of the things, you know, because that is a big plane. And if it takes off for anyone that's never got on a flight, that's a big, big plane. And when it's taken off, it do seem like you can get in your car, go get your car and drive faster than that plane. But that's looking from the uh, inside out when you're looking at that plane. But if you're on the outside looking at that plane, that plane is taxiing faster than what you think it is. So we can't be we can't let our mind be tricked into things or imagine things that are that 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 are not what they are. You know, so when you look at that, you're sitting in the seat and you're like, man, good gosh, can we go any slower than this? It seems like we still taxiing, but. You think that you're going about five miles an hour, but outside that plane, those wheels are spinning probably at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, but it's just the plane is so big. That's the way your prosperity is. Your prosperity is so big that God's trying to get it airborne to get it to you. But you're sitting there and you're looking at your prosperity from the inside out and you're like, man, it ain't coming fast enough. I can get in my car and I can go get my own prosperity at my destination rather than waiting on this thing to bring, waiting on God's plane to bring it to me. So, you know, going back to that previous one, you know, about, you know, trying to out, outpace God. You cannot outpace God when it comes to your prosperity. You know, you can go get your car. By the time you get your car, this thing is airborne and it's moving. Even when you're in the air, it seems like it's going so slow. But when you look at it, you're at your destination. You know, I've been on those where they went from here to Korea and it seemed like, man, this is forever on this thing. But what you don't see is that plane is going about 200 plus miles an hour oh, getting God. you from the United States to Korea. But wow. then once you get to your destination, it's all worth it. 
you know? <laughs> so try not to outpace God when it comes down to your faith. Right. Your faith, it says here, practice your faith. Mm -hmm. Be patient in your faith. Your faith must persevere. You know, mm -hmm. so there's three things that are there for your faith and you have to practice all of it. You can't Amen. do a piece of it and say, well, I'm a practice faith, but then I don't have patience and perseverance. Amen. You know, Amen. so you have to do the entire principle or the entire instruction so that you don't miss a part of it and cause yourself to lose out on that prosperity when God's bringing. Amen. Amen. Hey, I just want before we move from this paragraph, just that last part on uh, 154, and it says in much uh, the same way you uh, you have to know how to handle the runway from uh, poverty to prosperity. You have to learn to be patient and consistent in faith. And here's uh, one way to do that. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That was Philippians 4 and 11. And if you if you've gotten the revelation of abundance and prosperity, but you're not there yet, just be joyous where you are, knowing that your situation is temporarily and it is only a temporary situation. So learn to be content. So I just thought that he really saw that that, that, that verse up, that scripture of, uh, of, yeah. of uh, and, and rapture, you know, the faith and the uh, patience and just that whatsoever state that we're in, not meaning that we stay there, but being content, though. Right. Yeah. Enjoy. You know, it's so funny when it comes to this particular principle. Um, I can always tell when I'm operating out of my flesh or when I'm operating out of my spirit. Um, when I'm operating out of my flesh, I'm always looking for a job because I can easily get a job. Like some people, that that might be a difficult thing for people to do. But for me, normally, because I mean, I went to school, went to grad school, got all this qualification, all the experience. So it's easy for me. And I got a lot of connections, too. So it's easy for me to call somebody up and say, hey. Is that director position open? Is that executive? I mean, I can easily do it, right? And I can always tell when when I w operate in my flesh when it comes to patience. It's all of a sudden now I tell Patrick, I said, you know what? I've been thinking maybe I need to get a job because, you know, I'll be a better. I was tell, look, listen to this. I would be I would be a better business person if I had a job because I won't be in it. I <laughs> I know, right? And then I, you know, have a humbling meeting with the Lord and then I'm back at where I'm supposed to be at. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> but so on the online church, um, on the online platform, we got some comments here. So Nyla said, having faith will make you be joyful when you don't have it. And oh, yeah, that's a good one right there. And we, Having faith will make you be joyful when you don't have it. Um, Noah and Meredith says, whatsoever state I find myself in, therewith to be content. Amen. Yeah. All right. Moving along. So the next section talks about the privilege and the price. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to elaborate about this, this, this uh, privilege that we have? Amen. So let me. Well, some of the nobody comments. So I'm gonna put so it says you already have the privilege of walking in prosperity by being a son or daughter of God, but most people will not pay the price to be prosperous. There is a price you have to pay. Someone would say, What do you mean? There's a price I have to pay. And he said, Yes, there's a price. There's a price of commitment that you have to pay. And so um, then he goes on that you you regarding God has to know that he can trust you with his goods. And so it's so funny that he talks about this trust thing. So it was a scripture that I was studying this morning and the scripture, which I think is very aligned with this right here. And it was a scripture that talked about acts of me and I would, it's um, Psalms two and eight. And it says acts of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth as your possession. And so another version said, ask, ask me for the nations and every nation on earth will belong to you. And so I remember in prayer time, which goes along with, I just read, I remember asking God, you know, am I, I said, um, why would I want nations as a present? Or why would I want the, the continent? Cause the message verse is talking about nations as a present as your birthday. And, and the Lord said, um, nations as a present, present and continents as a prize. And I said, why would I want that? 
And I even asked, am I mature enough to have nations as a gift? And I brought that up, which I heard the Holy Spirit say, yes, I am, because I reverence him and what I do. But what I brought that up is because going back to what he's talking about here, that price, that commitment, that trust, you know, of what will you do with the money? What will you do when you have a certain level of responsibility? Are you mature enough? You know, and I remember when he I did hear in my prayer time in my study time that God, um, well, he said that it means that you will have the nation's attention. So when you speak and he said that, um, but it's more than just about you will have their attention. It's also about they will do what you say. So imagine that you have the nation's attention and they will do what you say. That's a huge responsibility, right? So it's the same thing when it comes to financial responsibility because we're, you know, kingdom financers, right? And so because he blesses us financially, are we, what we currently have, are we being responsible for it? Or can he trust us with it? Are we giving now? Are we giving before we, we get the money, right? <laughs> you know, some people be like, okay, look, you know what? I'm going to get to this charity. I'm going to get to this cause. Matter of fact, I'm going to get to this mission trip when I start making this amount of money. But what about now? Where are you giving now? You know? And so um, I just want to throw that out there because it just reminded me of my study time this morning regarding about all we have to do is ask for the nations and he'll give it to us. But it does come with a responsibility. So true. So true. And, wait, 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 laughing at me. <laughs> no, no, I was just agreeing with you there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because in his book, I can't remember what chapter it was in. It was, you know, he talked about that is that, you know, okay, hey, if your income now is $500 a week, if you're not tightening or sewing now at 500 so that when you start making 5000 a week, you know, what if you're not doing it with, with the small amount, you know, so what do you, you know, like I said, as you just stated about, you know, to the different charities and uh, are just sewing, you know, into the, right. the, the storehouse that you're getting fed at. So if you're not practicing the principle, if you got a lower income now, then so, okay, say you come into an inheritance, what are you going to, you know, and like I say, um, and like I said, as you stated, that, that's an important piece there that that uh, trust, you know, because if he can't trust, you know, you with the small amount, he can't enlarge you with a um, a big amount to, you know, to be in. in and I think over in the next couple uh, paragraphs, he's going to talk about about uh, position. And so and that's, you know, what you know, it's true. I mean, about that trust, because that's what is built off of, because uh, and I know the next couple pages is going to talk about the giving and the receiving, you know, um, you know, in the kingdom is 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 you know you got to give in order to receive because they're going to talk about withdrawal here on the next couple of pages. So, but you know, this is how it operates and everything is so. Um, and we know that we can't beat God's giving, but yet it just seemed like it just for some individuals it's just hard for them to give because of just how it was taught in the past or how they grew up and whatever. Uh congregation or whatever, how it was ties in the sowing of the seed was uh, uh, taught to them and everything, though. So but yet, you know, we're trying to teach, you know, coming out of that and that poverty mindset so that we can be uh, prosper and and live in a, in a um, uh, prosper life and everything, though. Amen. Amen. I love how you give that example about his sons with the gun. And I think it was a lady, Joy, Pastor Ben was talking about that, too, like, you know, we wouldn't give um, Zuri, you know, mm -hmm. the little baby, she was mm -hmm. two years old. We wouldn't give her, you know, the keys to the car, but we would give it to the older sibling, right? Well, hopefully, right. <laughs> you know? Right. And so <laughs> the same thing with the gun. He said, I, I wouldn't give it to my younger son because he said he would be loading up on everything, you know, with the gun. So it's the same thing, same concept. Um, Kayla, you was getting ready to say something? Oh, no, I was agreeing with you because I was going to bring up that example too. I was cracking up. Because why would you do that? I think you're breaking up, Key. Are y'all able to hear her? Okay. <laughs> It's the it's the barracks internet. Their internet is so awesome. We gotta speak positive about their internet. 
<laughs> yes, I heard Jesus. <laughs> Look. Okay, you clear now, I think. Did you want to finish your comment? You said you was get ready. Um <laughs> I was saying that I was agreeing with you with the um, example that you brung up out of the book, because even in the way that he laid it out, it sounds silly, but at the same time, that's doing. We're asking God, oh, I'm part of prosperity, but we say, hey, you know how to handle it, but if you get a little money right now, what you going to do? Are you going right. to What's right with it? Are you going to have a plan for it? And a lot of people like to say, like, yeah, uh huh, I'm a do it, don't do it right, but when it actually happened in real life, that does we, not happen. Not, um, I think we decipher that, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what that what that equates to me when you go back to prosperity is if you if you substitute that gun, you know, for prosperity or inheritance, you know, and you know, there's there's what inheritance that you would with God, God is trying to say, hey, are you mature enough to handle the, the responsibility of the prosperity that I'm going to bring to you? If you're not ready for that, then why am I going to give it to you? Because you're not mature enough. You're like a child. And if I give this to you, then the prosperity is, is probably not going to mean anything because you're either going to, you know, squander it, use it or whatever the wrong way and not as, as we've been saying before, there's that trust thing there. If you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you faithful over many things. You know, so a lot of times we want money. We want prosperity. But then there comes that demonstration to God. You know, have you demonstrated that you're ready to receive uh, a large prosperity that God is bringing to you? Just like he's using his older son and his younger son. So when you look at that from a prosperity, uh, a prosperity standpoint, even with an inheritance or even with nations, that as you're doing this, this, um, this transfer of inheritance to your children, because you have been prosperous, so as you prosper, your children prosper. But if the children are not ready for that, and you decide that, or God decides that, hey, you're finished, and this is transferring to your children. If they're not ready for it, what becomes of the prosperity? What does it go? What is the inheritance? What becomes of the inheritance if they're not ready and prepared for it? You know, and that's like giving, um, I would say for Jelana and Patrick, you know, with, with their business, that's like giving your business to a five-year-old and say, you're going to run this now. He's not properly trained. He's not ready. He hasn't been taught. He hasn't been, he hasn't been equipped or, 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 or even uh, receive the instructions of how to do that. So this thing of this trust from God, where he say, there's the privilege and the price. The privilege comes from being joint heirs with Christ. But then the price of that is being committed to being a joint heir with Christ. You know, so you have to be committed to being that joint heir, which means that I have to be able to be in a position and in a posture just as Christ, in order to receive this as a joint heir or receive that privilege of it. Because giving and receiving, giving and receiving is a privilege in itself. You know, not everybody's able to do that. That's only for a select group of people. Prosperity is not for those that are, that, that are not joint heirs with Christ. You can gain, but what are you gaining when you're not a joint heir? You know, and the price of that is commitment and being consistent. Amen. Well, we would love to hear from the online church. We're getting, you know, coming to a close. We'd love to hear while we're continuing the, the discussion, but um, definitely go ahead and start putting in your takeaways um, so we yeah. can go ahead and move forward. But yeah, um, did you want to, um, Brother Mark, did you want to elaborate any more um, before? Because I know we still got some more areas. Mm -hmm. No, I, I was good. I, you know, I think that was a good for we, you know, start the next one. We could stop here and everything. And like I said, and get the online if there was any um, online comments, questions. And uh, and then we can close out from there once you um, uh, if they had any um, takeaways or comments on it and everything tonight. All right. So, Brother Vincent, what's your takeaway? 
Okay, you, you Way to put me on the spot early. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay. I'm okay, people. I'm okay. Brother Vincent is okay. But no, I want to go back to the thing of uh, um, where it says comparing yourself to others yeah. can lead to your destruction. So be careful not to compare yourself to others because, you, as, as Jelana said, you don't understand the backdrop of what that person has been doing, what they've been waiting for to get that. And then you're trying to jump into that and just receive it and do what they're doing. I guess I shouldn't say receive, but comparing yourself to them, engaging yourself. You should measure yourself against the word and not against the person. Amen. Measure yourself Amen. against the principle of God and where God is uh, preparing you, vice trying to get somewhere where someone else is and comparing yourself to them and not understanding the preparation that they've been been through waiting on that prosperity to come. Because again, it's surviving until prosperity arrives and they may have been surviving for a while and now the prosperity is finally here and it's in such an abundance that you are now comparing yourself to that. Mm. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay, well, you have a takeaway? Yes, ma'am. I'm with my camera off because, you know, a lot of strange things have been happening in my therapist. You're fine. <laughs> uh, my takeaway is from page 155, where he says, most people pay the price to be prosperous. That price is commitment. So I will be committed and I will pay the price to gain the prosperity that God wants for me. I'll stay content. Not comparing myself to others and being patient. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Um, so I think my biggest takeaway is um, being responsible for what I have now. So um, that you know, I'm, I think I'm already operating in the place of joy and just definitely doing the spiritual things to keep me in my spirit versus my flesh while I'm waiting. And moving along how but the also the other thing is just being a giver now like finding new ways to give um now and i, I i've been doing a lot of that in some pieces but just being aware of that as well so that's my takeaway and i know we got um brother martin did you want to do your takeaway before we go to the online um keep it simple or short and simple c and c don't complain and don't compare NC. I like that. Okay, oh, yeah. acronym. <laughs> so we have, let's see here. So we got knowledge. She said, so basically we can pray for things and ask God for stuff. But if we haven't postured ourselves to receive it, then we won't receive what we are asking for until we have postured ourselves. Mother Sandra said, be content no matter what state I am in. Amen. And Michelle B says, my takeaway is to always show God that you can be obedient in all aspects. Therefore, he can grant you prosperity. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess we can go ahead and call for souls. So um, if you're on here tonight and, you know, um, I'm, I don't know who's on here and or who have not received salvation. But guess what? Tonight is your night. If you have not. You do not have to be perfect or have it all together. What um, what you do need to have is being willing and um, and open to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you want to not do life alone and also go to heaven, have eternity after life as well, then say this prayer with me as well. All right. So, God, we just thank you. Um, Heavenly Father, um, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life and you know how I lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he died for my sins. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me. And from now on, from this day forward, I belong to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer 
and you believe with your heart, guess what? You have received salvation. This word of God says that angels are rejoicing in heaven. And as mm -hmm. believers, we're rejoicing with you. Mm -hmm. And the great news is you do not have to do life alone. It doesn't matter if you had a feeling or not a feeling. But if you said that prayer and you believed it, you're saved. Amen. And so let us know um, in the chat box that you receive salvation. We do have a free gift for you and we would love to connect with you. Amen. Uh -huh. Father God, we thank you for this awesome Bible study on tonight, Lord. We pray that each and every one that has joined us on tonight, Lord, has received your word, Lord, and has increased their faith tonight, Lord. We thank you for, Lord, just the increase in your word, your knowledge on tonight, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for just uh, us being able to come together uh, and to uh, learn of your word on tonight, Lord. We pray for each and every one that is on uh, this online platform. We ask that you would just continue to bless them, their families, their children, and, and their loved ones and co-workers. And, and, and just more families and friends right now, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to cover us in your blood, Lord. Allow us to continue to meditate on your word both day and night as your word instruct us to tonight, Lord. Now we ask that your angels go before us to protect us and to guide us on tonight, Lord. And even as we rise on tomorrow, Lord, that we start our day with you and we will end our day with you, Lord. And we do just give you the glory, the praise, and the honor that is due to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Amen. All right. So have a good night. Have a good night.